In our last session, we introduced the idea that we're going to look at what John the Baptist is teaching to ask ourselves what it means to truly be saved and truly to be in a relationship with God. John gives this incredible challenge uh, as we begin to unpack his message, is having warned the religious leaders to flee the coming wrath, he makes it clear that we need to show that we have repented and turned to God by the way that we live. And the question we're asking is, does that relate directly to what it means to be saved, or is it more about our witness and our walk? And over church history, over the centuries, this has been a theological debate around the idea of um, being once saved, always saved. At the very heart of, uh, of God is that he sees and understands that pain and damage himself. And that pain and damage that we see causes a separation between humanity and God. And God wants us to know wholeness, he wants us to know freedom, he wants us to know healing. And that's the beauty of the message of the cross because actually God didn't stay remote from all of that pain and suffering but stepped into time, stepped into the world and lived as a human being and experienced, experienced everything that we experience. He went through everything we went through so that when he died on the cross, he died as somebody who identified fully with the sin of humanity, but had remained sinless so that he could pay the price and settle the debt. Because quite rightly, the questions that Stephen Fry and others ask, where is their justice, requires an answer. And the sin and the crimes that we see, you know, when we see uh, the innocent slaughtered and we cry out for justice, God himself cries out for justice and says those acts need to be paid for. It there needs to be consequences to those actions because they're injustice. Uh, they're unjust. And so God, having stepped into time, created the way for justice to be met. And the Bible tells us that there will come a time where Jesus returns. Jesus steps back into time for a second time. And when he does that the second time, because the debt has already been settled, he's coming back to bring justice and to administer judgment to deal with the inhumanity that there is around us. And dealing with that means that the fair judge needs to punish what has happened. If we saw all those crimes and saw them going unpunished we, and saw a judge saying it's all right, I'll let people off for the crimes that they've committed, we would say that that was an unjust decision. And so when we look at the issue of judgment and justice, we have to see it as being part of the fairness of God's design. But actually God says there will come a day where there needs to be justice for all of those actions. The message of the cross is quite simply, who is going to carry the can for those actions? And Jesus himself at this point stands up and says, my death, I died for those actions. I died to allow people who make a decision to accept my gift of salvation to receive that gift as grace, that we get what we don't deserve, we get salvation. But the contrary to that, the choice that we're also given is, if we don't want to accept that offer of the gift of salvation, then we can pay that debt ourselves for the things that we've done wrong. So the message of the cross and John's message about fleeing the coming wrath is actually that there is a time where God will step into time to deal with all of that. We need to be saved from that um, coming wrath. We need to be saved from the judgment that we rightly deserve. So my question to you today is, who is going to carry the can for the wrong things that you've done in your life? Do you want to carry that can for yourself? Or will you accept the offer of salvation from that judgment that awaits?